read the English scripture on which Bodbelly's sermon is based. And today's English, English scripture comes from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I will be reading verses 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. And I will call upon my militarian to deliver the English sermon this morning. This morning, I want to focus on one word which the Apostle Paul uses in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10. In this, if you read the first six verses of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, you'll find that the word stronghold or its plural form, strongholds, keep recurring. And the Apostle says that we will be given the ability by God to demolish those strongholds. So what is a stronghold? My entire sermon today is built around this word. What is a stronghold? It's a fortified place, either by its geographical location or by its construction. In the Middle Ages, people built castles at the summit of high mountains, and because those castles have are situated on lofty mountain tops, they are they they could be easily defended by a small contingent of soldiers, and they were inaccessible for the enemy. It was difficult for the enemy to access those castles and to attack them. So those castles became a place of refuge that provided safety and protection for those who dwelt within them. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 14, we read that when David lived as a fugitive, trying to escape from the wrath of King Saul, who wanted to kill him, he dwelt in the strongholds that were found in the wilderness. The wilderness, of course, was the Judean desert. So David, as a fugitive, hid himself in the strongholds that were in the wilderness. Those strongholds were caves located on the sides of high mountains and that made them very difficult to access. So David hid himself or sought safety by hiding in those caves that are located on the sides of high mountains or hills. Now, if a stronghold is dominated by your enemy, then that stronghold is no longer a place of safety for you, it becomes a place of extreme danger. 
because it's dominated by the enemy. There are strongholds today in the world that are bastions of demonic activities. Now the Apostle Paul defines the word stronghold for us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5, he says a stronghold is anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Anything that opposes God is an evil stronghold. Anything that contradicts the teachings of the gospel, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So that, that's a biblical definition. And we, we will say if we follow this definition and apply it to what we see around us today. One of the evil strongholds today is the steady influx of misinformation or disinformation to which you are exposed every day. This steady stream of misinformation is a dangerous stronghold because it shapes our perceptions and controls our thoughts. What we hear shapes our perceptions and our thoughts. So that makes it very dangerous. The cultural environment in which we live, the peer pressures, the fear, the fear of rejection or the fear of exposure, all these are negative thoughts and as such are evil strongholds that must be pulled down. Do you read your horoscope? I hope not. I know some people do it for fun. But others allow the horoscope reading to control their lives and dictate their daily agenda. Mrs. Nancy Reagan believed in astrology. And she had a friend named Carol Reiter, who was an astrologer and whom she consulted almost every day. Nancy Reagan says that she consulted this astrologer before she prepared her husband's daily schedule and his daily appointments. She did this to protect him from evil omens, from bad things. In 1965, President uh, Ronald Reagan, he was not president then, but in 1965, he published a book titled Where is the rest of me? It's an interesting title, Where is the rest of me? With a question mark. In this book, he confesses that he and his wife studied the astrological charts every day. And their astrologist, Carol Ryder, confirmed that President Reagan never revealed the exact hour of his birth as a precaution against letting people control him. Now, astrologists and those who follow astrology believe if, uh, if people know the day, the month, the year, and the exact hour of your birth, then they can make either good things or bad things happen to you. They can control your life. And so President Reagan never, everybody knew, of course knew President Reagan's date of birth, but he never divulged the exact hour of his birth. He did to protect himself against being manipulated or controlled by hostile forces. Unfortunately, there are many people today who believe in meaningless super 
superstitions. They say they dislike Friday the 13th. Now if on Friday the 13th you feel fearful, gloomy, expecting bad things to happen, then you have put yourself under the influence of a demonic power. Now in Iran, the number 13 is avoided. Iranians, Persians don't like the number 13. And if you go to Iran, you don't see number 13 on houses or apartments. If an apartment follows number 12, then the next apartment is not marked as 13, it's marked 12 plus 1. If you go to a high-rise building that has more than 13 stories, and you want to go to the 13th floor, you enter the elevator and you don't find a control, you don't find on the control panel uh, a button marked 13. You'll find a button marked 12 plus 1. You know, the Iranians' New Year always happens on March 21, which is the spring equinox. The first day of spring is the Persians' New Year. And, and every year when, when they celebrate their New Year, which they call No Rules, the No Rules holiday is two weeks long. And on the 13th day, on the 13th day that follows their new year, Iranians don't stay at home. They go to public parks, uh, orchards, uh, gardens, or those who live in the north go to the Caspian beaches. They have to be outside their homes on, on the 13th day that follows their new year. Because they believe if they stay home, something bad would happen to them. So to, uh, to avoid a disaster or a calamity happening to them, they all leave their homes and go out. All these are meaningless superstitions, or if a black cat crosses your path, then a tragedy is going to happen to you. So if you believe in such meaningless superstitions, you are placing yourself under the influence of demonic powers. Another stronghold, evil stronghold, that must be pulled down are false doctrines, and there are many of them. We can spend days or weeks discussing false doctrines. But I'll be brief, I'll refer to only one or two. One of the false doctrines today is that this world, this amazing universe in which we live, happened by accident. So they don't acknowledge that there is a creator who created this intricate, harmonious universe. Billions of years ago, I don't know how they counted those years, billions of years ago, an accident happened in outer space and then this universe came into existence. Uh, the, one of the ancient uh, Greek philosophers, Aristotle, he was very observant. He observed that this universe, he calls it cosmos, which is the Greek word for universe. This cosmos, this universe of ours, is very intricate and very complex. So he did not believe it could have been created by accident. Aristotle believed that there was a first cause responsible for the creation of this complex and intricate universe. And that first cause, of course, we call God. Thomas Aquinas, who was the most famous uh, philosopher during medieval times, 
He said, for this universe to keep sustaining itself, it needs a sustainer. We all know that our planet Earth revolves around the sun once a year. And that gives us, the revolution of the Earth around the sun gives us the four seasons every year. And our world rotates on its own axis every day. And that's why every day consists of a light part and a dark part. The world rotates, it spins on its axis every day at a tremendous speed. And so Thomas Aquinas says, this universe to keep revolving around the sun once a year and to keep rotating on its axis every day needs to be sustained. There must be a sustainer who sustains this universe. And he calls that sustainer God. Thomas Aquinas also says something else. He says there is harmony in this universe. The universe in which we live is harmonious. So there must be a source for this harmony. And that source, of course, is God. Another Stronghold that needs to be pulled down, that needs to be demolished, is pride. Until we acknowledge our dependence on God, we will remain chained and bound up by the stronghold of pride. King David, when he was at the height of his power, and Job, when he was at his most miserable, when he was in his most miserable condition, both asked the same question. They both asked God the same question. What is man that you care for him? They asked God, what is man that you care for him? And the answer to this question, which was raised by King David and by Job, is found in the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 5. In Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 5, we're told, You created man a little lower than the angels, but you crowned him with glory and honor. So compared to the angels, man has a low stature. Yet, God has raised us up to a higher level by giving us dominion and authority over this universe that he created. Now, that seems to be like an oxymoron. You might say, what is an oxymoron? An oxymoron is made up of two statements that are true, but they seem contradictory. How could man below in stature, yet at the same time have a highly privileged position. This is an oxymoron. Two statements that are true, but seem contradictory. For instance, we know glue sticks to everything it, it touches. But why is it that glue doesn't stick to, to the bottle in which it is found? That's an oxymoron. Why is a boxing ring a square? <coughs> the boxing where two people fight. <laughs> um, it's called a ring, but actually it's a square. So these are oxymorons. And uh, the same thing makes people puzzled. Yes. The Bible says we're low, low in stature, and then we have a highly privileged position. How, how can this be? Well, it is because of our connection to Jesus Christ. We who once were God's enemies, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, have been reconciled to God 
through the death of Christ, and now we have become his children. We were no longer God's enemies, we we're God's children. And as God's children, we are highly privileged. How? Because as God's children, we are now the rightful heirs of his eternal kingdom. Another evil stronghold that must be demolished is unbelief. Not too long ago, I met a person who said, I will always worry because I am just a human and there is nothing that God can do to help me. I will always worry. He is not alone. There are many people who think, who think like him. Such thinking has made our language filled with expressions like this job cannot be done, certain victories cannot be won, some circumstances cannot be changed. Now such thinking is opposite to what the Bible says. In the Bible we read that everything is possible for those who believe doesn't say everything is guaranteed, but everything is possible for the man and woman of faith. And we all know the Apostle Paul's statement in Philippians, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. So, don't, if, if you believe that you are helpless, because you are human and even God cannot help you, then you are believing something that is opposite to what the scriptures teach. <clears throat> Another stronghold that must be pulled down and demolished is fear. Some people fear trying to do a new thing because they think they will fail and become embarrassed. And because of this, they don't want to try anything new, lest they fail and become embarrassed. See, fear causes paralysis. If you are gripped by fear, you'll be paralyzed. And fear will prevent us from advancing and, and succeed in, in our achievements. The strongholds that, that uh, we have to demolish are many. Addictions, addictions to harmful drugs, alcohol, pornography, all these are evil strongholds that must be demolished by the church. The Apostle Paul says, refers to imaginations, perceptions, pretensions, and everything that exalts itself against God to be a stronghold, evil stronghold, that must be pulled down. Yeah, perceptions, speculations, imaginations. These things could make us doubt our ability to cope with certain problems. False perceptions can make us believe that our goals are not achievable, are not attainable, and that will cause despair. So you see, we are at war. We are at war and the battlefield is the mind. Because to change human behavior in an effective way, you have to change people's way of thinking, their pattern of thinking must be changed. And this is what the Apostle Paul acknowledges in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. He says, be, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the, the strongholds the Apostle Paul refers to are not just geographical locations 
<coughs> they are negative attitudes, destructive thought patterns, mindsets that are opposed to God's truth. Have you noticed how they demolish old buildings? On TV, several times I, I watched how they demolish large buildings. They, tell, they say that to bring down a large building, you have to put dynamite sticks at certain strategic locations. So experts go to the building and they know where to put dynamite sticks. They locate the strategic locations. And then the whole building comes down very, very easily. Same way, to demolish the strongholds of evil, we have to use dynamite sticks and place them in strategic places. Now, in the Bible, we come across the word power very often. In both the Old Testament and New Testament, the word power occurs many times. In the New Testament, the English word power is the translation of the Greek word dunamis. And dunamis in Greek means dynamite. Uh, the, the Greek word for power is dunamis, and from that word, the word dynamite is derived. So, the word of God is our weapon for demolishing all these strongholds of evil. The Apostle Paul says our weapons, the weapons we use against these strongholds of evil are not of this world because our warfare is spiritual and our weapons must be spiritual in nature as well. And he refers to the sword and identifies it as the Word of God. In Ephesians 6, 18, we're told, be alert, keep on praying, and use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Epistle to the Hebrews tells us that the sword of the Spirit is double-edged. It cuts both ways. Its blade has, both, both edges of its blade are sharp and they can cut either way. So the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. The Word of God is our weapon and Jesus used it when he was tempted by the devil after his baptism. He used the Word of God effectively against all the temptations of, of, of the devil. But notice, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, he uses the word weapons. He says, our weapons are not carnal. They're spiritual. And they're out of this world. Well, the reference is to weapons, more than one. The word of God, the sword, the word of God is identified. What is the second one? The second one is prayer. Because the same apostle says, be alert, keep on praying. Uh, be alert is a military term. As a soldier, as soldiers of Christ, we have to be watchful and alert and sober all the time. And keep on praying. So developing a prayer life is the second weapon that God has placed at our disposal. That we have to use in our spiritual warfare against the powers of evil. Psalm 144 verse 2. If you read that psalm, you find that the writer, the psalmist, talks to God, addresses God, and says, He is my fortress and my stronghold. He is my deliverer and my refuge. Notice he uses the word stronghold and fortress together. God is our fortress. God is our stronghold. God is our refuge. 
God is our shelter from the storms of life. Now the good news is that God can not only destroy the strongholds of evil, but he can become our stronghold. He can become our deliverer. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for not being blind to our tears, nor deaf to our prayers, and never silent to our pain. You see, you hear, and we are confident that you will deliver us from all negative thoughts and feelings. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who shared our human experience and got acquainted with our joys and sorrows, our laughters and tears our trials and temptations and triumph over all of them and therefore he is able to help us surmount all the obstacles that we face and defeat all the forces of evil we pray father to provide healing to the sick among us whose names are mentioned in our bulletin, we entreat you in a special way on behalf of Brother Parnak, Sister Soma, who are sick, afflicted with the COVID virus. We pray, Lord, that you would ease their pain and help them recover quickly. Father, comfort the grieving alleviate the fears of those who are frightened, dispel the worries of those who are discouraged, and sustain those who are weary and tired. Touch each one of them with your healing power and give them an extra infusion of hope through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose wonderful name.